Good afternoon. I'm Dave Whitmore from Vector Corrosion Technologies, and I want to show you a little bit more about this concrete block that we've constructed for demonstrating the effectiveness of galvanic anodes. Uh, this block is constructed in two sections. The first section up to here is constructed out of chloride contaminated concrete. This upper section is constructed with chloride free concrete to represent a concrete patch repair in a concrete column or in a concrete bridge deck. We have a connection to the reinforcing steel in the structure and embedded within the structure we have two different types of anodes. In the concrete repair we have a gallo shield XP4 anode which is embedded inside this concrete section and the lead wires from the gallo shield XP4 anode are exiting right here and in the concrete jacket that has been installed on the face of this concrete slab we have a galvanode DAS anode installed which has been cast into this concrete jacket or if this block was laid horizontally it would be a concrete overlay in a bridge deck situation and again we have a lead wire that we can connect to here to connect to this anode we can use a regular copper copper sulfate reference electrode and we can measure the corrosion potential of the reinforcing steel and we can also measure the potential of the anodes that are embedded in this concrete slab. We can take the uh, reference electrode, touch it to the concrete and we can measure the corrosion potential of the steel. The corrosion potential of the steel is 555 millivolts negative. It's well below minus 350 millivolts, which would indicate that there's more than enough chlorides in the slab for active corrosion. We can take the connection here and we can connect it to the anode that's embedded in the concrete repair. And we can measure the potential of the anode in the concrete repair. The potential of the anode here is 1.2 volts negative it's more negative than the steel in the in the concrete slab and therefore the anode is going to corrode preferentially to the steel in the slab itself we can also measure the potential of the anode that's embedded into the jacket and the potential is approximately the same as the other anode roughly minus 1.2 volts and again, the anode is more negative than the reinforcing steel, so if the anode is connected to the steel, the anode is going to grow preferentially to the steel. We can use the same multimeter and we can take away the reference electrode and we can make connections to the reinforcing steel and we can measure the voltage difference directly between the anode and the reinforcing steel. In this case, the voltage difference measured directly is 638 millivolts or 0.6 volts. And we can measure with the other anode just to compare. And it's approximately the same at 0.7 volts or 700 millivolts difference, negative relative to the reinforcing steel. We can change our meter from measuring volts to measuring current, so from DC volts, we're going to change to DC milliamps. We're going to change our meter from measuring volts to measuring amps. And we're going to see that the anode is putting out 1.6 milliamps of current that is flowing to the reinforcing seal. We can take this connection and we can move it from the anode that's embedded in the concrete jacket to the anode which is embedded in the concrete uh, is poured directly into the concrete itself and again we can measure the current that's being generated by the anode which is approximately similar to the other anode roughly 1.6 milliamps initial current. Over time this current is going to come down and stabilize as the anode passes current to the reinforcing steel and the potential of the steel is, is stabilized.
this way, any type of galvanic anode can be can be measured and it can be demonstrated. If you wish to do this in the field, you need to install a monitoring box so that you have access to these connection points and you can go with the meter and take these measurements on the field structure.